Let's pray together. Lord God, what a blessed Sabbath already. Uh, how beautiful it was to see Kirsten make that decision. Um, thank you, God, for that moment. Thank you for your presence. We just pray that you continue to be here with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So this Sabbath is a unique one here in Newmarket. Um, we've been talking about small groups for uh, a little while here. Um, and this Sabbath is unique in that we don't just want to talk about small groups, but we want to give you the opportunity to act, uh, to actually make a decision and sign up and be a part of a small group. Uh, so we're going to have you get up out of your seats at one point, actually at the end of the service, and uh, hopefully sign on the dotted line. Um, in just a few minutes, uh, Shane and I are going to be inviting all of the small group leaders to come here to the front uh, for them to share a little bit about what they are doing and hopefully uh, to uh, entice you to join one or more small groups. Um, but before we do that, we want to take a few minutes just to remind us, remind each one of us why small groups are important. Why it is that not only does uh, the, the Bible and the spirit of prophecy speak so highly of them, but why we have chosen to make small groups as part of our stated vision here at the New Market Seventh-day Adventist Church. So we're going to do just a, a kind of a quick review um, of small groups and their importance. Uh, and Pastor Shane's going to start us off by taking a look at small groups in the Old Testament. It is tempting to think that small groups, good though they may be, are simply one of thousands, perhaps tens of thousands of ministry programs, quotes programs, that the church has dreamt up over its 2,000 years of existence. They may be good things, they may be helpful things, but truth be told, because they're just one of many creations of the church, it can be taken or left, doesn't matter. If that is your opinion, I would gently challenge you to reconfigure your thoughts on the topic. Because, did you know, in the beginning, God created the heavens, the earth, the seas, and small groups. Now, that's not a direct quote, but almost. Because, when God decides to create humanity, He first starts with Adam, and then after everything has been, it is good, and behold, it was good, and behold, it was be good, and then He gets to Adam, and after it's done, He says, hmm, this isn't so good. It is not good for the man to be what? Alone. And so God creates the first small group, Eve. And later on, Eve and Adam have a family that expands. In the beginning, God created us to be in small groups. We call them families. Exactly. God could have said to Adam, Adam, you're going to be over here in Japan. Eve, you're going to be in Germany. And then uh, Bob, Bill, Joe, Frank, Fred, etc. You're going to be in Afghanistan and South America and Honolulu, etc. We could have all been independent operators never to cross paths. Or God could have said, I'm going to create thousands of humans. They're just going to be kind of like lemmings. They'll be masses. No particular relationships between them. They're just going to be out there. God did not choose either one of those extremes. Instead, he said, if my people are to grow best, if they are to learn what it is that I so desire them to learn, if they are to come to know me, they need to be in small groups, families. In fact, it's no exaggeration to say Old Testament that God accomplishes through his people was dependent upon the quality or lack thereof of the small group ministry of families. Amen. In the New Testament, Jesus continued that tradition um, through his ministry uh, in the context of 12 disciples. Jesus it preached to thousands, but he made, small, he made disciples in the context of a small group. He didn't make disciples by thousands. And when he gave the disciples the Great Commission, go and disciple all nations, they didn't do it by thousands, but they did it in the same way that Jesus had discipled them in the context of small groups. We've talked about this. Um, the, the churches in the New Testament were house churches. Uh, 1 Corinthians 16, 19. The churches of Asia greet you. Aquila and Priscilla greet, greet you heartily in the Lord with the church that is in their 
house. Now notice the house itself is not the church, but it's the gathering place for the church. The church didn't meet in large venues like this. They met primarily in houses, in small groups. It wasn't until several hundred years later, during the time of Constantine, that there was a shift from house churches and small groups to um, traditional buildings and larger gatherings. One of the things that's so powerful about this is the, not just the, the, the format that the New Testament church got together, but the way that they lived as intimate communities with one another. Throughout the New Testament, over and over again, there's this phrase that is repeated. Um, Fifty-nine times it's used in the context of uh, the, the church, of God's people to, uh, gathering together. It's the phrase, one another. And, and over and over and again, God's people are told to love one another, teach one another, encourage one another, serve one another, submit to one another, carry one another's burdens, accept one another. It, it goes on and on and on. Well, if you're going to do that, the context that that makes sense is in a small group. I love our time here, Sabbath morning, uh, in the New Market Seventh-day Adventist Church. But if we're going to teach one another, and not just listen to uh, Reed or Shane or Buzz teach, it's pretty hard to do it here, unless you've got <laughs> a lot of time to spend. If we're going to carry one another's burdens... If we're going to serve one another, if we're really going to love one another, encourage one another, this is a difficult context to do that in. But when we get in something that looks more like a family, in a small group, then that can happen in a very powerful way. In just a moment, Shane is going to talk with us about uh, small groups in the early uh, Adventists. But I, I want to just uh, read a quote for you. For what Ellen White envisions happens when God's people come together. And she's taking this theme of one another from the New Testament and applying it to us today. What is the object of assembling together? We meet together to edify one another by an interchange of thoughts and feelings, to gather strength and light and courage. By becoming acquainted with one another's hopes and aspirations, and by our earnest, heartfelt prayers offered up in faith, we receive refreshment and vigor from the source of our strength. In the mid-1800s, God used essentially three people to help start the Great Advent Movement, the Seventh-day Adventist Movement. Joseph Bates was a sea captain, and of course, James White and his wife, Ellen. These were the three principal founders that the Lord used to found the Seventh-day Adventist Church. James White had come out of something that was known as the Christian Connection Church, C-O-N-N-E-X-I-O-N. -N -E uh, we think we're the, the new ones that think of clever spelling. Even in those days, they were doing it. Christian Connection Church was essentially a move to replicate the first century Christian faith. It was very much a return to that vibrant time when God's church was just beginning. Ellen White had come out of the Methodist Church. And in those days, in the Methodist Church, there was something that was called the class meeting uh, that was later called a social meeting that was very important. And so, when Adventism began from the very earliest days, and certainly from 1863 on when the name was for ad uh, uh, adopted, Seventh-day Adventist Church, small group ministry was at the core. It was the primary method, if I can put it that way, that Adventism propagated itself across the earth. Uh, we called it the social meeting, that when we would go to a new country, for instance, or even a new continent, for instance, when we went to Europe, one of the very first things that the first missionaries over to Europe did was to establish the practice of the small group meeting, the social meeting. If you went to an Adventist church for the first 60 or 70 years of Adventism, if you went to an Adventist church almost anywhere in the world, you probably wouldn't hear a preacher preaching a sermon because they didn't have settled pastors. You probably wouldn't go to a church building like this one where there was a, a service with a you know, children's story, special music offering, etc. But you would find a small group meeting. Because it was during that social meeting, the small group, that the believers would gather together. And the focus was this, the application of the Bible. Mm -hmm. It was expected that you'd already studied your Bible before you came to that meeting. That was, that was what you did during the week. On Sabbath, they had a social meeting and they talked about application. How am I living out the Bible? What is God doing in my life right now? What do I want Him to do right now? 
the small group, the social media, was so powerful that it became one of the primary factors that led to the Seventh-day Adventist movement becoming the fastest growing Protestant movement that the world had ever seen. Yeah. Amen. It made for powerful things to happen in those days, and I think it can do so again. Amen. Amen. Which brings us to New Market. Small groups in the Old Testament, small groups in the New Testament, small groups in early Adventism. But our prayer, our longing, is for there to be living, vibrant, spirit-filled small groups here in our church, in our surrounding communities. Amen. We have been talking about small groups and several different ways that they uh, can happen here in Newmarket. I just want to just very quickly kind of give you an overview, um, and, and in just a moment we're going to invite our small group leaders to, to come here to the front. There's five primary ways that we are uh, promoting small groups here in Newmarket. Um, the first and most basic is Sabbath school. Sabbath school is the classic Seventh-day Adventist small group. It's a powerful way to get to know God's Word and to try to live it out and implement it in your life. Um, it's powerful for adults. It's powerful for young children. Many of us, that's the way we first came to know Jesus was in Sabbath school. Matthew parties. Simply having a party and inviting people who are not yet part of our community, church community to come there, be there, deepen those relationships and pray and look for opportunities. Adventure groups. Now, um, I'm going to have some of the deacons come and help me. If, if you have not uh, had one of these, had a chance to look at it, or if you really would like another copy, this is our brochure of small groups here. Um, we've got a stack of them left, and if I could have some deacons come and uh, help me pass these out. Don't be shy. Go ahead and raise your hand. You'll need one of these if you've not yet received one of these brochures. Raise your hand, and we, we've got plenty. I, I, I hope to be completely out of those at the end of this Sabbath. So... Uh, don't be shy, we'll get them to you. Um, in this brochure are just a very basic definition of the three types of small groups that we're promoting this Sabbath. Uh, the first is adventure groups. Um, and these are simply small groups of people who engage in a common interest or activity together. Uh, the purpose is to build relationships inside and outside of this church. This is not a, a, a doctrinal uh, study. This is not a Bible study. It's not a prayer meeting. It's people getting together to do something around a common interest. You'll, you're going to hear about groups that are going to crochet together, ping pong together, a backpack together, a cook together, do art together. This is just coming together and doing fun stuff to build relationships. And Pastor Reed, if I could just interject. For those, purpose, for those relationships that are built there, I've said it before and I want to make it clear here, we love the people that come to these groups whether they ever become members of this church or not. Amen. It's not a bait and switch things. We're their friends regardless. And because Jesus changes us from the inside out, because we have been saved, we are praying and hoping that conversations that take place, relationships that are built, will one day lead to that person joining the kingdom. Amen. Amen. Next is traditional small groups. These are the uh, types of small groups that we typically think of uh, when we think of small groups. Uh, these are groups of people who meet together regularly for discussion, encouragement, um, and spiritual, physical, or emotional growth. Coming together to study the Bible, uh, pray together, uh, grow in our families, grow in our relationships. These are typical uh, traditional small groups that are powerful uh, we'll be sharing a, a little bit about uh, how small groups have, have blessed us in our own lives, but these are powerful ways to come know God better together. And finally, uh, summit groups. Oh, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> um, summit groups are, um, you might call them small groups 2.0. This is a, a little bit of a higher level of small group in some aspects. These are groups of people who meet together to plan and carry out ministry to the community. So people who are coming together, uh, not just to fellowship, not just to grow, but to actually plan and carry out ministry together. Uh, and of course, that is bonding when you do ministry together. If you've ever been on a mission trip, you know that that's a powerful way uh, to build relationships. But there's something just um, invigorating um, and inspiring about serving Christ and the community together. Amen. So at this time, I would like all of our small group leaders to come here to the front.
We're going to make some room for you. Come right on up. We have plenty of space up here. We'll just make a line right across the front here. That's good. Welcome, Sophia. We're glad you're here. Come right on up. Shane, do you want to grab that microphone there? Yes, I'll grab this um, yellow microphone. I think the orange one behind you. And the orange one behind me here. <laughs> okay. We're going to take um, just a few minutes here to give an opportunity for each of these small group leaders to uh, give you a snapshot of their group and what it will be about. Uh, the order that we're going to go through is the same order that's in your brochure, so if you want to follow along, uh, make note. Um, Mark, oh, means you're up first. Yes. And let me just remind our small group leaders, you have 60 seconds. <laughs> go. Uh, let's see. We're working on it. Test, test. Should we try an orange one? Here? Testing. Let's swap out here. That's not off my time. That's not off your time. <laughs> I will restart. Okay, reset, ready? Reset, reset. Is that one going? Is this? Yeah, yeah there we go. Go. It was by no accident, I'm sure, that fishing was the first of the small groups put on the list. Aha. And yes. I hope the pastors will back me up here that uh, I think I'm on firm uh, scriptural footing when I say that fly fishing is what we'll do in heaven. <laughs> but uh, my group is for anyone who loves to fish, whether it's spin fishing, fly fishing, pole fishing, saltwater, freshwater, bait fishing, or noodling. And I encourage you to look that up if you don't know what that is. But we'll meet at my place uh, probably once a month and brag to each other and uh, uh, compare fishing tackle and maybe watch a video, uh, maybe a fly tying demonstration, uh, things like that, and hope if you enjoy fishing that you'll come join our group. Great. Amen. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lorraine Young. I think this is my first time up here, so I'm a little nervous. But anyway, crocheting has been a part of my life for almost 50 years. And I finally decided I needed to do something with it. So I started teaching classes through the county parks and recs. And that didn't seem to be enough because I had all these people that needed socialization. So I decided to put together crochet clubs. So I have one that's working in Woodstock. And the one that I have in my home here in Newmarket, there's a group that we have been together for seven years. So we meet every Tuesday evening, we have fun, we go on field trips, sometimes we go out to eat, but then we take all that time and we make things for the area nursing home, like lapkins and scarves and hats, and um, I'll go and buy mittens when they're really, really cheap and take them there. We make baby blankets. We're now getting into hospice hats. So... I want to invite you, if you crochet, if you don't know how to crochet, I can tell you how you can learn, and we'd love to have you. Amen. Thank you. Is Mike Reedy over there? Mike Reedy is right oh, here. There he is. So my group is uh, backpacking, and uh, it's going to be for anybody, uh, whether you're experienced or, or new. Uh, we're going to do the first trip in the springtime. We'll, we'll let the little, some of the cold weather uh, pass. And, um, yeah, we'll get together um, uh, before we can talk about the trip and uh, talk about gear and, uh, and see uh, if, if you need gear, we, we can maybe find, uh, find some gear for you. So hope to have you out there. Be fun. Great. Excellent. All right. Donna Harley. There Donna's right here. Should I do both ones? Uh, no, just, just uh, women's. Okay. I'm actually leading out with two groups and I'm either crazy or blessed, but blessed. I'm blessed. <laughs> but uh, the one for the women's exercise and aerobics, um, some of us have actually been meeting for 30 years. Um, one of our group members has lost over 50 pounds. Oh. I have not been so fortunate, but I have <laughs> been blessed. Um, this is an exercise that everybody can do. You don't have to be able to get on the floor. Um, we have modification, we have a lot of fun, we talk while we're exercising, 
sometimes sing. Anyway, it's very informal, but I haven't come up with the exercises experts have. And it's a blessing because I'm kind of lazy, so if I didn't have to show up to lead out, I probably wouldn't exercise like I should. So and if any of the rest of you need some support, please come. Uh, right now we meet in the primary Sabbath school room, but sometimes in January we start out in Fellowship Hall, and then usually by the end of the year we're in primary Sabbath school room because <laughs> people drop out. But some of us hardcore have stayed with it for years. Great. Thank you, Don. Good. Um, uh, my second group is a as an art group. I want to uh, make it clear that this is not an art class, but a, a, a way for artists to get together who enjoy painting and drawing. When God made us, he gave us the ability to create, and I think we're closer to him than any other time when we're making something of beauty. So we'll spend about two hours together. I, I do mostly watercolor paintings, and we'll complete a watercolor in the two hours, and you're welcome to come and watch or join in, bring your own supplies, and you'll have a couple of hours to create a masterpiece. Great. Excellent. Sarah Smith, is she going this way? Me to hold the mic for you. Got it. My name is Sarah Smith. Most of you know me. I'm going to teach beginning quilting and possibly beginning sewing. Love to have you come. Please sign up and put on there. You prefer afternoons. You prefer evenings. I'm not sure when we're going to meet yet. But once I've learned to quilt, I fell in love with it, and I thoroughly enjoy it. That's great. Amen. Thank you. Good stuff. All right. Can I just say, isn't this cool to see Kirsten up here so quickly after being baptized? <laughs> Amen. What a good example. Amen. Amen. <laughs> okay, so Caleb and I have a giant St. Bernard named Molly at home, and we love to take her walking at the New Market Park. So we're doing a dog walking meetup. Um, you don't necessarily have to have a dog to meet up with us. You can just like dogs or want to walk with us. We probably will meet up at some point at the Harrisonburg Dog Park or other dog walking parks in Harrisonburg. It's just a good way to get some exercise and love on our puppies. Amen, great, hey, hey. thank you. Uh, Adam Williams is not here, um, so I will speak for him. I'm gonna be part of this group. Uh, we're gonna play ping pong and make some friends, and it'll be a lot of fun. Mary Farrow. Can you guess what this group is all about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Food, right. A little closer, Mary. Hold them right up to your mouth. Closer? Closer. Okay, you sorry, go. sorry. Um, cooking and baking and juicing for better health. Um, creating new recipes and... Um, old ones and using old ones, um, come join us for fun in the kitchen. All right. You're here. Sorry. I, I so those were all of our adventure groups. Um, and now we're going to uh, hear from those who are starting traditional small groups. So we have Harlan. So God had a problem. Jesus came to the earth, <clears throat> died, resurrected, went back to heaven, then what? He chose a special person with a special mission who had a special background who could communicate in a special way what that Jesus event meant. Mm -hmm. He wrote particularly two books, one to Romans who were non-Hebrews. What does the Jesus thing mean if you're not a Hebrew Jewish person? Mm -hmm. Also wrote the book of Hebrews. If you are a Jewish person, what does, the Jewish, what does the Jesus event mean to you? Or for Paul, it was for us. Mm -hmm. We're going to focus on Romans and Hebrews to see what Paul had to say to each of those people groups about what Jesus meant. Amen. Thank you. The group I'm doing is called 40 Days, and I'm going through this study that Dennis Smith has written. Now, we're not going to end in 40 days. We will start. He has seven of these that I know of that we can continue, and it is a time for purifying and testing. God sent the Holy Spirit for 
spiritual growth and to reach others. And I need the spiritual growth of encouragement and those that can be in my small group to help encourage each other to reach others for Christ. Amen. Amen. I've been a member of this congregation for 25 years. And uh, some of you know me, some of you don't. Some of you know me and don't know you know me. <laughs> because um, I have, uh, April of 2017, I decided to turn over my appetite to the Lord. Mm -hmm. How many of you realize the first temptation on earth was yeah. appetite? That's right. So, how do we stand a chance? Mm. So, I have chosen to give God control of this every day, some days it's moment by moment, um, to give me my comfort, to mm. fill up the empty places in my life. I lost my dad when I was nine. That's when I started gaining weight. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm not saying it's everybody's issue, but it's certainly mine, and I want to be there to help to encourage others to be able to find their fill in the Lord instead of in food. Amen. Amen. And I brought an illustration because oh. pastor said bring an illustration. <laughs> and this is actually two sizes smaller. Stretch it. Stretch it because when I wore it, it was stretched. Okay. That's actually two sizes smaller than when I started. Um, wow. So one of the nice benefits of turning all this over to the Lord is I've lost 130 pounds. Mm -hmm. so. wow. I want to be able to help others that have the same battle to fight. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Oh. Kelly and I are not Krista, but we have been to Krista's small group for parents who have differently gifted children. We met Tuesday night this past week. It was a blessing for me to be there. It has made Kelly and I very aware of many in our campus family who have children that are differently gifted. Mm -hmm. It's been an encouragement and we are working on uh, expanding in inviting the conference, North American Division, to actually make our campus a pilot program for parents and children. Mm -hmm. And so uh, if this is something that strikes a chord in your heart, I can assure you that you will find support and love camaraderie, and praying together for our children. Amen. 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 I really appreciate uh, Pastor Reed uh, presenting what Ellen White had said about small groups, how in that it's a place where you can share your feelings, your hopes, your aspirations, your fears, your disappointments, your confusion, your something to share, something to learn. Small groups is just, I've experienced it before, and it's absolutely incredible. We just passed through a season of the year when we remember that the angels came to the shepherds and said, Fear not, for I bring you what? Good news. Good, Good tidings news. of what? Great joy. Great joy. For who? All people. All people. For unto you Savior. is born this day Savior. in the city of David a what? Savior. A Savior. What does a Savior do? Savior. We will talk about that. What does a Savior do? A Savior who is Christ the Lord. Great joy, good tidings. That's what the gospel is. Are you experiencing it? Have you experienced that good tidings and great joy? I believe that uh, Harlan's study and my study, our group, will cover some of the very same issues. But the gospel, it's good news. Amen. Has it been good news for you? Come and share it. Tell us about that good news. Share it with other people. That's what we're going to be about. We're going to be meeting initially to make it as easy for as many pot, uh, people as possible on Sabbath after potluck here at church. 
with uh, the encouragement of the staff. Uh -huh. Amen. Thank you. Donna Harley. One thing about the exercise group in your brochure, the times are actually reversed. I'm not that hardcore. It's 8.30 in the morning and 7.30 at night. So if you remember that. Um, as far as strengthening families and relationships, I've had over 50 years of experience in dealing with challenges, um, not only as a counselor, but before that as a babysitter, um, having boyfriends, and then getting married. And it seems like challenging people flocked to me from even a very young age. Mm -hmm. So I actually did a lot of study, very young, and still continue. I'm not gonna be giving lectures, but there is a DVD series, How to Have a New Kid in Five Days. We're not gonna meet five days straight, uh, <laughs> but the techniques you can actually learn in one day and it's very practical. You can use it on your husband, your boyfriend, <laughs> your students, uh, whatever, patients. I use it as a nurse and as a counselor. So very easy to learn. It takes a little practice. But if you're consistent, you can see transformations within five days. Sometimes for me, it's been within one day uh, once I learned to be very consistent. I'm not doing this alone. I have other people uh, that are going to help me that are also experts in their field. Uh, we'll be learning something about personalities, how to deal with specific personalities, how to get the best cooperation. So again, it's not going to be a lecture, but there will be a little bit of that, but very practical. It starts not this Sunday night, but the following at 7 o'clock. And we're going to meet either in the um, early teen room, which is the room right near Fellowship Hall. If we have overflow, we'll move it to the Fellowship Hall. Thank you. Uh, Kettering and I are starting a small group. We've done this before, but we want to intensify it and have it with purpose now. Uh, our small group starts today, right after church. We're taking, I think we're taking 11 uh, that's all we can haul, so we're, we're full. But anyway, um, you all realize that these kids love getting off campus. Mm, sure. They love to have a place to crash. They love to eat food. And when you take them home and you give them a home, a second home, and you feed them, it gives you permission to share spiritual things with them. Mm. They'll, they'll listen to you when you talk. And so the spiritual aspect of our, our um, small group, and by the way, our group's going to be fluid. It'll have different kids as we go. But I want to meet with kids more than once. Uh, 1 Peter 3 verse 15 says, always be ready to give an answer for the hope that is in you if someone asks. And so I want to get these kids to the point that they can grab a hold of and own a portion of scripture. Maybe if you share with them Psalms 51, it's my favorite chapter in the whole Bible. Do you realize that the entire uh, message of salvation is contained in mm -hmm. Psalms chapter 51? And so I want to share that with the kids to the point that they will find one of their own, maybe even choose Psalms 51, to the point that they can now forever have a witness to share with someone. Amen. 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 Our group is called Tracking God. Now that might seem, seem a little bit strange to you, but the bottom line is Jesus said to his disciples, come follow me. And so we're starting in Genesis and watching how God treats people. And I'd like to share with you something that was said by one of our students. We have both adults and SVA students coming. And I wanted to share this with you because it impressed me. And I hope that you realize that our young people are looking. Mm -hmm. I've been thinking why God chose the stories that he did to be in the Bible. Did no one else ever have a relationship with God in the time of David's world other than David? Mm -hmm. Would I be in the Bible if it was written now? I'm starting to realize that every story included in the Bible is not just about the characters written about. Each story reveals something about God's character, and I'm going to begin to look for the clues and the signs that reveal God's character in each story. Mm. I'm learning that a tracker finds what he is tracking only because he's determined. He puts in the effort. For us to truly understand and find God, we must put effort into seeking Him. 
God has made it easy for us to find him, but we must be determined to seek him. And the best part about tracking him is that the more clues you find, the closer you get to him. Do you know what that means? By tracking God, you are also strengthening your relationship with God. You will understand why he has reacted the way he did and who he is. You will not only love him more, but you will learn to trust him more as well. Amen. 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 So we're going to take just a few minutes now and uh, give time for our summit group leaders to share. Kevin and Jean. Oh, yeah. Um, I'd like to read Acts 1.8, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And in, in fact, we're uh, mission groups far and near. Um, some of those mission groups would be uh, here in Newmarket, uh, possibly uh, all the way down to Harrisonburg. We might even go to another country like uh, West Virginia, uh, <laughs> expand out all over. Wow. But our first desire, it's twofold, um, our prayer, is that in coming together as a group for missions, that we will learn about each other's uh, thoughts and, and prayers for other people and come together to know each other better to go on these missions together and thereby strengthen our, our core here or with that group. And then reach out to other people wherever it is with the Holy Spirit deciding where that is. Amen. 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 Uh, Rachi? <laughs> I'm really bad at this. That's okay. <laughs> uh, you can tell Mark's a retired physician because he's in three or four groups. So <laughs> Mark and I are your new marriage and family directors, and we want to plan a marriage retreat this year, but not just for New Market Church. We are encouraged to ask other Christian churches in our area to do it together with us. So our planning group is not to include just this church, but we are going to other Christian churches and ask them to join not only in a marriage planning, but probably a parenting class too. So that's our group. Great. Thank you. Jeffrey. Uh, the health expo that we have is uh, pretty much we start as a group, as a family. Uh, we start traveling uh, to a different states and churches and then start growing. As a, Now we have a group of 15, 18 people that we've been traveling. And I want to invite every one of you to, to participate. It's been a great uh, enjoyment to, to learn about God and uh, prove that it works. In my life it works so much and I truly believe that God gave us this message to share with others. Mm -hmm. uh, health reform it's not really having a healthy lungs, healthy, healthy heart, or healthy brain. Health reform is really being holy as God is holy. Mm. Uh, health reform, uh, as we understand, it is putting our minds in such a condition that we really, when heaven downloads that present, uh, the precious truth to us, we can really understand, we can share it with others, and be prepared as a people of God to meet him. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Um, before I hand over the mic, um, I just want to say it's so cool that we have Sophia leading out a summit group. Uh, the video you're about to see, Sophia and Samantha uh, put it all together, did all the editing and everything themselves. thank everybody who helped us make our first video. Um, it's actually really a challenge to actually do this. We like... <laughs> We'd like to invite you, everyone to, uh, who's interested with the kids, 
to to be part of uh, of of this team is is a great idea. Uh, the whole idea about it is, you know, to have the kids, you know, learning new uh, healthy recipes, um, be guided by spiritual prophecy when we read, uh, you know, the uh, messages that we have from uh, Sister White, and put this in a video and show it to other families as well. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. I'm very excited about all of these small groups, uh, the ones that are represented here, and I know that there's others that people have been talking about, and even some that have already uh, been going. We want to see more and more. So this time, I'm going to dismiss all of these small group leaders. They're going to go out in the hallways and prepare, and after we have our benediction, we're going to send you all out to sign up for um, the small group. So you all can go find your stations and get ready. Uh, he's got the only one. I don't have one with me. <coughs> What's that? I'm just saying that we have free windows here. Oh, okay. You yes. Uh, Donna Harley wants me to make sure that you know that for her, um, uh, I assume just for the family class, that there is free babysitting. So you might want to take advantage of that. When I was 16 years old, what I longed for in my life more than anything else was to belong. I didn't realize it at that moment, at that time. I thought what I really wanted was to be cool, uh, to be entertained. But really the longing of my heart, the craving of my soul was to belong. Um, I, didn't, I wasn't getting exactly what I needed, what I longed for in my family. Uh, so God sent uh, a, a beautiful um, family, uh, Marty Williams and her family took me under their wing. Uh, it was transformational for my life. And then not only did God send the Williams family, uh, but he sent Pastor Buzz and Flag Camp. Um, and I remember that very first summer when I was working for Flag Camp. Flag Camp is like the ultimate self-managed ministry team. You have a group of young people who are just sent off with a purpose and a mission, and they grow together, they laugh together, they, they, they pray together, um, and it's powerful. And I remember that first summer having a sense of belonging that I had never experienced with my peers before in my life. And it was Jesus Christ who, who kind of cemented us together in ways that I didn't even know was imaginable, and it completely transformed my life. Hebrews 10, 25 says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as in the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. What's that day? It's the second coming of Jesus Christ. It's saying that the closer and closer we get to the second coming, the more and more that we need to press together, encourage one another, be there for one another, live as the community that God has intended. If you want 2019 to be different, join a small group and see what God can do through it. I want to leave you with this thought. In the years just prior to me coming to the New Market Church in 2004, I had the privilege of taking a dozen people from the Forest Park Church in Everett, Washington, just north of Seattle, and planting a new Seventh-day Adventist church about 15 minutes or so drive to the east in a place called Lake Stevens. It was the most difficult, most rewarding thing in ministry that I have done. We started with a dozen people. By the time, two and a half years later, uh, we were averaging about 75 people on a Sabbath morning, uh, nearly all of which had not been attending any church of any sort prior to coming uh, to our church. If you had come on a Sabbath morning to our church, you would have discovered very quickly how important small group ministry was. We would start at 10 a.m. with the sermon time. I would preach uh, uh, an evangelistic sermon of some sort since we were just starting out there. And then we would take a break. We'd have some refreshments. And then we would gather into small groups. Uh, they were social meetings. We called them community growth groups. And, and the, the gymnasium that we were meeting in, that we were renting, sometimes the, uh, most of the gym would be filled with these, these groups of adults that were in these small group discussions. The topic for the groups every Sabbath was the same. Take what was talked about during the sermon time and talk about how to apply it to our lives. 
In the dozens and dozens of small group meetings that I had over the years that I was at that church plant, I can honestly say this, there was never, ever, even remotely a bad meeting. It just never happened. Now you try that with any other meeting that you can think of that you go to regularly. <laughs> I can't say it about any others that I've gone to, but for that there never was a bad one. Instead, this was a time when real Christianity was on full display. People would come in there. Every, every group had guests in it. Every Sabbath. There's always some guest there that was not a Seventh-day Adventist. Many of them not even Christians. And people would go around the circle and they would talk about their victories with the Lord, their failures with the Lord, you know, pleading with the Lord to do this in my life. Tears would be falling from guests' faces as they saw that Jesus was for real. And those small group ministries have made it possible that there will be people in the kingdom of God that never otherwise would have been there. Amen. You know, in just a moment, Pastor Reed's going to explain the, the brief nuts and bolts about how to sign up for these groups. But I just want to challenge you with this. If you want to go deep with God, I want to suggest to you that you need to start by going small. If you want to go deep with God, you need to start small. You need to start in a small group with people that are looking to build the kingdom of God, inviting for some of these groups, inviting guests from outside of that group that are not yet ready for the second coming of Jesus. If you want to go deep with God and his purposes and his ministry for you, it's difficult to imagine a better place to start than in a small group. Let today be your day to join one. Amen. So how you can do that, after our closing hymn and benediction, uh, all the small group leaders are lined up here uh, in the hallways. Right in the foyer out here are the summit groups, um, uh, health expo, marriage planning, um, uh, Sophia's group, uh, kids in the kitchen, so forth. Um, to your right, as you go out these doors, to the right are all of the adventure groups. You'll see them there lined up. Uh, to your left, as you go out, are all the traditional small groups. The leaders are standing there. They can answer your questions. Uh, most importantly, they've got a clipboard, so you can sign up, put your contact information there, and you can be a part. Jesus, we long for that day when indeed we will say that we are completely free. Free from this place that too often is dark and filled with despair. Lord, we thank you that until that time comes, that there are indeed pockets of light that we can be a part of. As we think about small groups, Lord, as we think about how to do your work, and yes, Lord, even to finish it in this part of the world, we pray that you would inspire us, that you would lead us, that you would guide us, and that there would be a mighty harvest ready for you when you come back. This is our prayer, and we ask it in your name. Amen. Amen.